accepted for it. Say that again. That's right. So if I write that as a positive exponent, you remember doing that last part of class last time with those negative exponents? We change those back to a positive. You go, okay, instead of y to the negative 3, I don't like that so much. I want to do 1 over y cubed. I'm going to move over here with the rest of our rules so you all can see them. There's only two more. Next one. What's anything to the zero power? How much is that? Some people say zero, some people say one. What is it? It's not itself. It's one. Yeah, it's one. Anything to the zero power is defined as one. And lastly, a refresher. We did this last time, just a, it's a good little note to have. Anything to the, the negative exponent. We can always change it to a positive exponent by doing what? To the so wherever it is, we change the, the part of the fraction it's on. If it's on the numerator and it's negative, we move it to the denominator. If it's on the denominator, we can make it positive by moving it to the numerator. We just change the spot of the fraction where it is. So for, our, for instance right here, we consider this to be on a numerator because you can write that over 1. If we want to change the a to the negative n to a to the positive n, what we have to do is we have to write this on the denominator of the fraction. Remember, recall from last time, that it doesn't change the sign of the number, it just changes the sign of the exponent. And we did several examples, but I'll give you another one over here. Uh, let's see. x to the negative 4, we could write that as 1 over x to the 4. Hey, would you raise your hand and feel okay with with these, these rules. They should be a refresher for you, right? Should be a refresher for you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these rules that we, we just kind of reviewed and we're going to apply them to our rational exponents. What you need to know is that every one of these rules works exactly the same way for rational exponents as it does for whole numbers. Now I gave you some whole number or integer exponents, but right now I'm going to give you those fraction exponents. They work the same. As long as you stick with these rules, there's only seven of them. Most of them are, are, are very refresher. Uh, the only one that, that really might be a little new for you is, is using this with those fractions, but it's the same ideas. Are right, you guys ready to try some examples here? Okay, let's do that. Okay, we got x to the one-third times x to the one-fourth. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have a common base there? Do we have a common base? And we're, they're being multiplied. So when we look at this, we're multiplying them. What situation are we most like? Rule one through seven. Which one are we most like, do you think? Rule number one. I've got two things with a common base that are multiplied together, and I have some exponents up there. So what am I going to do to those exponents? Am I going to add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them? What do you think? For sure, I'm going to add them. That's what that says, right? You know what a lot of people do? A lot of people do this. They make the mistake, and they, they're doing this really quickly because they, they get the handle on it right, but then they, they're really not reviewing it enough, and they get to the test, and they go, oh, that's x to the 112. Do you see how easy that is to do? If you're just thinking multiplication, your head's thinking multiplication, right? You're not thinking really the exponent rules if you're just seeing this. If you just see this, you go, oh, 112, yay, I'm done. Well, if we do that, we're, we're kind of missing the big picture here, right? These are exponents. And exponent rules say if I'm multiplying common bases, what I'm really doing is I'm adding those exponents together. That's what I'm really doing. Now, can you add one third plus one fourth? You do? We don't have to add fractions, right? This is a fraction class. We're past fraction class. That's great. So we use your calculator. I don't care if you use your calculator or do it off the side. I would personally do this off the side. I just say, okay, I know I need to add one third plus one fourth. That means the common denominator. The common denominator is going to be what? So we're going to multiply this by four over four. This by three over three. We'll get four twelfths. We'll get three twelfths. That's going to give us seven twelfths. So instead of x to the one-third times x to the one-fourth, or x to the one-third plus one-fourth, 
we actually added those and we got x to the 7 twelfths. Are you okay with that one? Yeah. Hey, by the way, could you write this as a root? No. Could you write that as a root? What type of root do we have? Twelfth root. Twelfth root of what? X to the 7 So if you wanted to, if the problem asks for it, that's that root. These things are the same thing. So this actually makes that. I want you to see how this, this stuff actually works here. Notice that the common denominator, the common denominator is the root, isn't it? It is the root. Because we know that the denominator makes the root up, so when we find the common denominator, that's making a common root. This you could have written as a cube root of x, right? This you could have written as a fourth root of x. Multiply those two things together, you have to find a common root. In that case, it means a common denominator. That's why all this stuff is, it is intertwined. It works like that. <clears throat> all right, let's move on here. Before I do, are there any questions on that example? Because this is just our start-off point. Are you guys alright with that one? So the final answer is the square root? If it asks for the root, then yeah, that's the final answer. If it doesn't, you can definitely leave it uh, x to the 7 twelfths. You don't have to do this. What I'm trying to do is uh, make you remember that this is possible. Okay, I don't want you to forget this. Nine to the two fifths over nine to the twelve fifths. Hey, let's look back at our rules. Can you tell me what rule are we most like? One through seven. There's only two that have fractions, right? There's four and there's five. The four would be everything raised to a power. We're not there. We're actually at number five, where we have something raised to a power and something raised to a power. We have the common base there. You with me on that? That's five. Okay, so what are we going to do with those exponents? Add, subtract, multiply, divide, what do you think? Subtract. Definitely subtract. What we do on this case is we take our 9, we write only one 9 because we're combining the exponents. We're combining these two things by subtracting exponents. Are we going to have 12 fifths minus 2 fifths or 2 fifths minus 12 fifths? Can you do 2 fifths minus 12 fifths? That's kind of better than that problem, right? You don't even need a common denominator. It's already there for you. That's great. How much are you going to get? Two-fifths minus twelve-fifths. It's negative? Okay. Is the number negative or just an exponent? Negative ten-fifths. Are we done? What do we need to do? This is a fraction. Even though it's an exponent, it's still a fraction, which means that you, you can simplify it just like you would any other fraction. So negative 10 over 5, we didn't know that's negative 2. We're not going to leave a negative 10 fifths. I don't want that. We're going to say, oh, OK. That's 9 to the negative 2. Tell me another thing we can do with that. This is another rule. What rule is this? Now, Seven. That's number seven. It says, OK, anything that's raised to a negative exponent, we can make that a positive exponent by putting that on the denominator of fraction. So right here, we're going to go, all right, I want 1 over 9 squared. 1 over 9 squared. Ladies and gentlemen, how much is 9 squared? 81. So this is 1 over 81. Gee, so we worked this all the way down. We only got 1 out of 80. Isn't that kind of interesting that this means the same thing as that? Just by using our rules and manipulating that, we get that down to 1 over 81. It's kind of cool, right? That's a whole lot easier to think about than that. Can you go back to the original problem? You can, but I mean, it's, it's after you do all this, if you just looked at this, there's no way to tell that that's what you started with. y to the negative 3 tenths times y to the 6 tenths. Hey, again, what situation are we? Let's look closely at the board. What one are we? What do we look like here? We're 
we're still in number one. We've got common bases. We're multiplying. That's definitely number one. What are you going to do with these exponents, folks? Add them. You're going to add them. Even though one's negative, that's okay. You can still add them together. That's fine. So we know we're going to have y to the negative 3 tenths times y to the 6 tenths. I just wrote the same thing twice. <laughs> Since we had those common bases we're multiplying, we know we're going to add the negative 3 tenths and the 6 tenths. What's great is we already have a common denominator. If you don't have a common denominator, you've got to find one if you're adding fractions. That's what we did in this, this first example. But now that we have negative 3 tenths plus 6 tenths, how much are we going to have? 3 tenths. Positive 3 tenths. Okay, very good. Add those together, you get 3 tenths. Could you write this as a root? Yes. 10th root, 1 root. Good, yeah, 10th root, because that's our denominator, and the power is the numerator, so we, we would have that exactly. That's as far as we could go. Would you raise your hand feel okay with these, these ones so far? All right. We're going to try a couple more together. I'll give you several to do on your own. I'll make sure that you guys can do this. <coughs> then I'll move on and I'll show you how we can really apply this stuff some, some unique, unique ideas. Eleven to the two ninths to the third power. Eleven to the two ninths, all raised to the third power. What do you think about this one? What rule are we for that? Number four. Number four would be number four would be a fraction raised to an exponent. We don't really have a fraction. We have that's an exponent, right? And that's an exponent. Which one is that? Two. That's number two. That's right. This says an exponent raised to an exponent with, with some number or some value. We have some value. We have an uh, exponent raised to an exponent. Did you guys see it? Yeah. yeah. How come you don't have the third power to the base? This one to this one? Yeah. You are. You are. Because what you're doing here is this means 11 to the 2 ninths. This would be 11 to the 2 ninths times 11 to the 2 ninths times 11 to the 2 ninths. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. And when you do that, you don't multiply the 11s. They're already being multiplied. You're taking those exponents and you're, you're making it so that you don't really have to deal with the 11s. You're dealing only with the exponents. Indirectly, you are dealing with the 11. Does that make sense? You are doing that. Okay, 11 to the 2 ninths to the third power. What are we going to do with those exponents, folks? Definitely multiply them. Yeah, we have an exponent raised to an exponent there. Exponent raised to an exponent. So we're going to have, sure, 11 is still our base. Right? The base doesn't really change when you're dealing with exponents. But up here for, for our new exponent, we'll have 2 ninths times 3. We're multiplying those exponents. Yes, no? Yeah. Okay. How? What are we going to get? Okay, it's six ninths, sure. Can you simplify this like you would any other fraction? For instance, this is three over one. Could you simplify that? Sure. What simplifies out of that thing? 